Hello and welcome everyone, Lionheart here with the first of many battle exports from the Team Dignitas Total War Rome 2 Invitational Tournament which uh, I took part in co-casting with Creative Assembly's Mr. Dogbert or CA Hoodie and at the same time Gamer Dudester and Indie Pride two other Total War YouTubers were hosting um, some of the matches on the Total War official uh, channel Everything you're about to see was from the Team Dignitas Ready Up TV Twitch account, which you can find their channel in the description. Do go check them out as, lo as well as Gamer Dudester and Indie Pride. Do go check everybody out. So it was a great tournament. Uh, we had some of the best Rome 2 players invited along to battle it out for a £750 prize. So first up, we're going to be looking at the battles for third place in this tournament. The rest of the battles, I believe Game of has already showed a fair few, but here I'm going to be showing on my channel the Twitch exports for the battle for third place and then the final for first and second. So, battle for third place is between Cluellen and Agony Panda Warrior, and in the grand final, we have Baylor of Agatha versus Agony Duck. So, if you weren't able to tune into that live stream, then make sure you subscribe to my channel. And I'll be uploading all the all the matches and all the battles separately over the next couple of days. It will probably be about a week for all the parts to be uploaded. Uh, but we'll get one or two battles a day. We're going to kick things off with the battle for third place between Cluellen and Panda Warrior first of all. And then we'll go on to the finals. I'm going to be putting all of these videos into a playlist so you can easily find them all. So sit back, relax and enjoy some Rome 2 online action. Game of Dudes, sir. Let me know, uh, run us through the build of Panda Warrior. Both f uh, of our players, Panda Warrior and uh, Cluellen, playing as Rome. Understood. Indeed, Rome mirror matchup is something that actually I don't think we have seen on our side of the bracket. Did you guys run into it before? Uh, no, we haven't, but I do remember a couple of Rome mirror matchups in previous tournaments. Mm -hmm. They were they Definitely. were interesting, yeah. Yeah, Rome matchups are always about uh, who brings the more cost-effective units to the field and how uh, how it ends up, uh, how the lines end up engaging. Uh, so Panda Warrior's army is composed of. Let's take a look at his cap first. He's got uh, two units of Soki Equites, one on each flank, and then one unit of Equites. We've seen Equites being used quite a lot in this tournament. Whenever Rome has been used, they're decent units. They got good uh, health and armor values, and uh, they can definitely and are most definitely used to blunt enemy sword charges. So they'll you'll see them run into an enemy sword unit, slow it down uh, to, to prevent the charge. But against Rome, charge bonuses are really low, so they're not really going to see much of that. Three units of levies, a peculiar choice. You don't see much of them. Again, most likely going to be used as meat shields. Panda Warrior puts them on his right flank, maybe a little bit of a ruse. He doesn't want to put them in the middle and kind of show that he wants to use them as a meat shield. A Legatus with a uh, Auxiliary African War Elephants is going to wrap up his uh, mounted contingent. At the front, he's got uh, two units of legionary cohorts, I believe. And then he's mixed in, again, different types of quality units for uh, Rome. And Rome can do this, really. He's got all types of units. And one thing to kind of keep in mind is he doesn't put same units next to each other. So if you pan over his units with your mouse, you'll see he's got Hastadis, legionary cohorts, veteran legionaries. He's placed every single unit... Uh, like, the units are not the same next to each other. And that's going to be very difficult for his opponent to be able to attack targets. And he's going to get really lost in the different quality types of troops. It might come to bite him in the back, but uh, hopefully it won't. Uh, and that's it for uh, for Panda Warrior's build. Pretty sword-heavy, as you'd expect. Yeah. Okay, so uh, just for viewers as well to help them out, uh, the Rome with the yellow banner is Panda Warrior, and the Rome with the red banner is uh, Cluellen, so hopefully that will uh, make it a little bit easier, although this is going to get messy with a mirror match. Uh, India, are you able to um, to run down the units of Cluellen, or are you still following the stream? I'm just following the stream right now. Okay, so uh, I'll give a quick rundown of what we've got with um, uh, Cluellen here, but uh, I'll leave uh, Game Producer to jump in if uh, there is a sudden moment of action. So uh, we have uh, Equites on the uh, on the right flank, and again, similar to uh, Panda Warrior, we also have a mix of units in that front rank, which is now pushing towards uh, Panda Warrior. There, mixed between uh, Evercati cohort, I've seen some Principes in there as well, I believe, and Legionary cohort. So a very varied mix of units, and you said that will be very interesting to see how they're used exactly. 
uh, in this battle. More equites at the back there and a general's unit. And uh, I'll head, hand on over to GD to just comment on this action over on the left and right flanks. All right, so we've got uh, a few units of cavalry here. The uh, Some people are asking on the Twitch, how what did I mean when I say the levies were used as meat shields? They will be used to absorb the Pila. Uh, every single legionary unit in Rome's lineup basically has uh, Pila to throw. And Pila can be very devastating and they can change the battle. We can see some action happening here. Equites are going to try to attack units that are on the move. When your units are moving, you can get away with charges like this and basically disengage your cab without any penalty. Uh, you can again use that to prevent your enemy from getting a nice charge bonus on you, but you can see both units there are not really taking any damage. So we've got uh, an now, uh, engagement in the middle, sorry, just uh, sorry, jump in on you. Uh, Hastati against the Principes in the center, and the line, I'm just up on the tactical uh, view, we've got a bit of a gap on the right flank, and the left flank is now meeting in the middle, uh, a lot with uh, Cluenin's infantry, Panda Warrior pushing in now, and we've got some cavalry moving in over on the right there, GD. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, the the front line, it's kind of important to notice that there's an Evocati line here from the red-bannered Rome player, uh, Lulin. And then there is a legionary line here. So his forces are a little bit more discreet. Uh, those uh, Evocatis on the right, they're probably going to have mixed results. They're fighting against veterans and legionary cohort. Cavalry on the flanks, again, just now starting to get into uh, the, the fight. And again, they're just going to be fighting each other off. Soki Equites into the Equites. And here comes one more Equites unit. So Panda looks like he's going to win the cavalry engagement on the right side. But in comes more Cav now, hopefully from Lulin to try and change the tide. Keep an eye out on that elephant though. Here it comes through the middle. Yeah, I'm watching the elephants coming through the middle now. They're going through the uh, legionary cohort, which are pushing against the uh, legionaries of Cluellen there. And they're holding pretty strong, nine of nine. And they're now being brought into the into the backs of the prince pays on the left-hand side now. A yeah, questionable decision though, to kind of charge them in the back of your own men. Uh, you're not really gonna get the most out of them, but the, they're tanky enough to be able to kind of walk out of that and maybe get behind and uh, get some charges on the rear. So a couple of flashing banners already over on that right flank where that engagement's really intensifying. And you've got uh, Panda Warrior losing his Equites and uh, Cluellen losing... Oh no, his Equites have managed to just hold in there, but in the center, uh, Veteran Legionaries Panda Warrior have gone and Luen has lost some Legionaries as well. And as you said, those, those uh, levies are now engaged against some Equites. Yeah, they're not. They're not. That's not really where you want them to be. Uh, those those levies didn't really do much damage. They do have twelve and seventeen kills, which isn't super bad in this type of environment. But again, uh, I think he could have used them a little bit better. The elephant is still doing lots of damage in the middle, but it's not doing as much damage as you would like to see. And I think that's mainly because its charge bonus was kind of wasted. He charged into his own ears, but look at this. Lulin's Legatus is now trying to get through the hole here, and he's really uncontested. He can come in and do quick charges. Maybe uh, try to boost uh, some morale, but again, on this flank here, it's looking pretty tough uh, for uh, Lulin. Lots of legionary cohort troops that are going to be facing down the Evocatis and the legionary cohort combination from uh, Lulin. So it's, it's looking pretty tough for him on that flank, but he's doing well on the other flank here. He seems to have stabilized. There's lots of red banners. Those elephants got again, completely it's... wrecked. Yeah, the elephants. Uh, the elephants didn't really. They didn't do. They didn't do their job well. A hundred kills on an elephant unit is definitely not not a I mean, lot. They're still there. They're out of control, and they're still yeah. being a bit of a nuisance. But you know, they're going through his own men now. Yeah, this flank wins for uh, Yellow Rome, who is Panda Warrior, and this flank has won for Red Rome, who is Lulin, and now they're going to clash into the center. You see this a lot in, in Rome versus Rome battles. Fight on the flanks, decide them, and then crash into the middle. Yes. So still... Some levies uh, starting to come back, though, in the back lines there. They might be uh, they might be more effective now that it's a late game and units have lost lots of hit points. Yeah, plus they've been able to pull themselves... Well, they've obviously routed back out from the from the main battle, so hopefully they can pick off a few units if they do head towards them. There's a unit of uh, equities bearing down on them straight away. Two units, in fact. Uh, they're going to get uh, they're gonna get stomped here real quick. <laughs> it's going to hurt to be a levy today. Yes, it will. It, it usually hurts to be a levy any day. There they go. Back to the center, you can see that there's uh, some general abilities being popped now. Rally has gone down for Panda Warrior, who wants to try and keep his units into the fight. 
The elephant is actually still running around with two units and has now risen to over 100 kills. Again, still not being that cost effective, but Lulin using his own Legatus to try and get some charges on this legionary cohort. When a Roman player starts using his general like this, that's when you know that things are tough. He's trying to do damage, he's trying to route units with charges, and he actually succeeds. That legionary cohort is going to route off the field with 55 men remaining. Don't usually see that that often. That's an effective charge with the Legatus there, but as you said, the gloves are certainly off for him now. He's really giving it everything he's got to try and uh, to take control of the center action. Absolutely. More units now closing in from Lulin. You can see there's actually not many uh, yellow Roman troops for Panda Warrior. He yeah. really has uh, He's really been one hit. legionary cohort down to 90 men. Another veteran legionary to 87 men. He does have uh, Lulin, that is. Some Equites units here that are doing nothing. It's actually looking really, really good for the uh, Red Roman player, or <laughs> Red Roman player. That kind of sounds weird, doesn't it? <laughs> A little bit. But yeah, uh, Lulin, yeah, it's looking really good. And there we go. There's the battle like that. Units have routed, a valiant defeat, but uh, Cluland gains the victory there. Panda Warrior are losing the first battle. Yeah, definitely. If we look at the statistics screen, you can quickly see that the deciding factor in this game was the poor use of elephants by Panda Warrior. Uh, the elephants cost a lot of money. Uh, he brought elephants and levies, which made him not really able to get as many infantry units as uh, Lulin. Lulin brought a really good mix. He had three legionary cohorts, he had five legionaries, he had a principe, an evocati, two of those, and then he had hastati. 106 kills on one of his hastati, actually almost equaling that of an elephant uh, on the other side of the battlefield. So that's really, I think, the deciding factor for that one. Do you think also the, uh, obviously, again, the bringing the elephant and then throwing those levies in to um, you know, act as meat shields or you know, make up his numbers, do um, you really think that was... Uh you know, the wrong moves to take here. Yeah, I think I think the levies would have been more useful if um, if it was more of a... less of an aggressive uh, kind of engagement. Like, both players just move forward, hit each other. Levies are better when you can skirmish a little bit, channel. fall back a little bit, use them to kind of absorb some of the Pila, but not much Pila was actually thrown during this game. Um, it was just one wave and then charge by both players. And that kind of environment favors uh, favors Lulin's build hugely more. Uh, I would have liked to see the elephant again used a little bit better. Uh, maybe without the levies and with better use of the elephant, Panda could have pulled it off. But you can see more quality infantry for Lulin and, and that won him that game. Yeah, no, definitely. I think, Good game. I think you said um, it would have been interesting to see, had the elephants got more kills, what uh, what damage that could have done. Uh, what do you think about the, the use of cavalry in... Um that engagement there because I mean on uh Clune's side we've got 132 kills by a unit of equites and then okay we've got 72 with another but then very little for the for the other units and for Panda Warrior nothing over 58 kills um do you think that was just uh the way it played out with heavy infantry or could there could there be some better choices there with the cavalry I mean those equites killed levies the 132 and 72 kills are basically dead levies so they're not really that uh cost effective if you remove that from the equation, you can see that both Cav on both sides actually did a decent or, or similar enough job. I wouldn't say that's good. But then again, when you bring Roman cavalry to this kind of environment, you're not really expecting them to do much. Maybe if your opponent brings a Syrian archer or two or some skirmishers, they get to chase them off and, and prevent you know late game shenanigans from happening. And that's exactly what the Luland's Cav did. Uh, so yeah, pretty standard use of Cav. Uh, pretty bad use of elephants and more infantry won the day so i hope you enjoyed that first battle for the third place matchup between cluellen and agony panda warrior battle 2 will be uploaded tomorrow for you guys to check out or if you're watching this uh in the future then you can just look in the description for the playlist where i will have linked all of the battles for both the matchup for third place and the grand final between Agony Duck and Baylor of Agartha. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of these battles coming up for the Team Dignitas, Total War Rome 2 Invitational, Battle Exports. Until next time, ciao for now.